the topic uh, that we're closing with is uh, called maintaining, and uh, there's a spelling error already on the first slide there. That, that's the best time, all right. Uh, maintaining your type of three flow installation. And I think in the, um, in the description of this, I, um, I said with the composer and Git and friends, and uh, it will actually be mostly composer and Git. I'm not sure what I thought about with friends, but uh, maybe we'll come up with something. Um, so, um, first of all, uh, welcome. Uh, I would like to, just before we start, know how many of you have tried to install uh, Type of 3 Flow with Composer? <coughs> okay, so that's a good part of you. How many of you have tried to uh, require custom packages, uh, do other kind of stuff with Composer? Okay, so quite a bit of you have, uh, have, uh, have worked with that. Um, all right, that's that's uh, that's good. I'm I'm going to do a short introduction of Composer anyway, but uh, but we'll uh, get around to that. Okay. Firstly, the uh, the mandatory slide. Uh, this is me. Uh, I was actually when I made this, I, I took it from some other presentation. I was wondering why you always put a picture on these slides. I mean, I'm standing right here, and so. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, uh, my name is Christian. I am also known as Jule. Um, I live in Copenhagen, and uh, as uh, Sasha said, I've been around in the Type 3 community for a very long time. Um, so, uh, for the last uh, year or so, I have been mainly working with uh, Type 3 Flow, especially integrating Composer and uh, the package management. Is it possible to get a little bit less S on this microphone? Okay, we'll, we'll see if we can work that out. Um, okay, so. Uh, Here's a thank you slide, um, and that usually goes at the end of my uh, presentation, and you're not that lucky. But I, I thought I would take the chance of having just uh, my own uh, 30 seconds of uh, keynote here at the end of the day. So, uh, and the reason I'm doing that is that because uh, during the fall, um, I had the great privilege to be funded by uh, the Type 3 Association to integrate Composer into Type 3 Flow. And um, the Type 3 Association is this. Uh, uh, Swiss monster that a lot of us that don't really know how we should relate to. But I just wanted to uh, say thanks to all of you who've been supporting the association for a lot of years. Uh, it made it possible for me to spend a lot of time working on uh, on Cyber Three Flow. Um, and I know that uh, that there's a lot of people here and around the community that has been supporting Flow for a lot of years. And uh, I hope that uh, you are now. Uh, uh, reaping what uh, what you have invested in, and uh, but but I don't think that credit is given enough to the kind people that keep supporting um, the uh, community through the association and in general. So thank you, every one of you. Um, all right, let's get started with the talk. First of all. Right, so uh, first of all, just a uh, short overview of what we're going to go through this next half hour. First of all, I will give you an introduction to Composer. Uh, seems like most of you have been touching it, uh, but uh, we'll dive into uh, to some of the details. Uh, we'll have a look at Composer and Flow, How? Uh, what are the things that we benefit from with Composer, which um, uh, tasks are uh, Composer responsible for which tasks are Flow responsible for. Uh, we'll have a bit of look at uh, uh, working with Composer. Um, we'll take a look at some of the challenges that uh, arises with Composer. I'm sure uh, most of you have come across a few of those. Um, we'll have a look at a typical scenario um, of a uh, Type of 3 Flow project. Uh, a bit on how you roll your own Composer repository. And uh, finally, I will uh, come up with a suggestion on how to, uh, to work um, on a daily basis with uh, Composer and Type 3 Flow. So, now you know what you're up for. Um, right, so first of all, Composer. What is Composer? 
uh, one of the first things that might strike you is that it's a project that really needs some help with its uh, logo. Uh, <laughs> I, really, I mean, this guy's not even a composer. So he's the guy that, I don't know what the English word is for that. It's not, he's not composing anything. He's leading a, a, a symphony a orchestra. I don't know. Anyway, so, uh, so if there are some, uh, some design guys in here, I think they could need a hand. But uh, <laughs> besides that, um, uh, mainly uh, composer is a dependency manager. <coughs> Sorry. Um, and dependency management uh, basically means uh, uh, what you have on your uh, Linux installation when you require something on your um, um, uh, on your Mac ports when you're installing uh, whatever database and a lot of other packages come along. And the thing that um, uh, that you might not know and you do uh, might know is that. Uh, even though dependency management seems pretty simple, it's basically about saying, yeah, I need this thing and this thing needs that thing and that thing needs these three other things. Uh, dependency management is actually really, really hard. If you have a bit of uh, formal computational training, you might have come across the term called NP-complete, which is uh, the class of um, problems that are extremely hard to solve, and, and dependency management is one of them. So. Uh, so that's just to say that uh, this is a very non-trivial task uh, that the uh, composer is solving for us. Um, so of course there are problems that are harder to solve. I came across this quote the other day. There are only two hard problems in computing. Conference Wi-Fi and Twitter direct message red state. So that's uh, probably right. <laughs> okay, but, but dependency mention is uh, hard as well. Um, another thing that is um, that is uh, uh, central about Composer is that it's a distributed, um, uh, you say, not package management, but um, uh, uh, yeah, it allows for for having uh, components uh, distributed. Uh, if you look at something like our own old uh, extension repository or um, uh, the old PHP pair uh, repositories, one of the things that was uh, uh, very uh, uh, one of the problems with that for the tear, for example, is that everybody has to upload their code to the same, uh, not the same server necessarily, but to the same infrastructure at least. And uh, the Type 3 community had to maintain this infrastructure, make sure that it works, distribute it themselves, and everything. So Composer is built in a way that you can host your code wherever you want to and just tell Composer um, where it's located, and then everybody will be able to fetch it, and that's a pretty big uh, benefit, I think. Um, another thing is that Composer has been uh, very widely adopted in the PHP uh, community, even though it's a pretty young uh, project. Um, there's a lot of the bigger frameworks, so Symfony, um, uh, I don't, I, I don't know, um, but but a lot of uh, projects, a lot of libraries has been adopting this uh, as a standard. It's uh, kind of tightly built together with the PSRs or the PHP Fig, if you come across that uh, framework interoper interoperability group. Um, but it, but the, but even though it's a very young project, uh, a lot of um, of uh, uh, open source projects are using this as the dependency manager already, which means that um, this code is available for us to use uh, readily through uh, Composer. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense, but we'll get back to it. Um, right, so uh, let's have a look at, um, at a very simple Composer manifest. This is uh, the basic um, class that you need to uh, put in your um, um, and you, uh, this is a, uh, sorry. I thought this is a basic file uh, that you need to put in your project to tell Composer uh, what it is. So uh, basically, this uh, tells Composer that uh, this is the Type Three Welcome package. It has a uh, type of uh, Type Three Flow framework. There's a description. There's a license. Uh, it requires any version of Type Three Flow and uh, some information about uh, how to load the classes. In this, and with this information only, um, uh, uh, a composer is uh, is able to uh, fetch um, 
uh, this package, uh, get flow, get the other dependencies that are needed, and actually install everything that's needed for you to use uh, the Type 3 welcome package. Of course, uh, um, Composer needs to know about uh, this package in the first place. And this is where uh, a website called Packages come in, comes in. Robert mentioned it this morning. It's um, it is like uh, it's comparable to uh, the Type of 3 extension repository that you know from Type of 3 CMS. Uh, basically, what uh, you do is that you go to Packages, you create an account, uh, and you tell uh, Packages about the repository that your package is located in. Uh, and so what uh, Packagist will do is that it will look up that Git repository, look for the Composer JSON file, that's the manifest that we just had up, and, um, and get the information about uh, um, everything that's available from that. And it will actually get a lot more information than just the, the things that you put into your Composer manifest. It's also able to look up uh, the branches and the tags in your Git repository, which means that you can uh, you can check out specific versions um, uh, of your uh, code just from that. All right, so um, let's take a look at um, the file structure, the basic file structure that Composer creates. Uh, I don't know if yeah, that's that should be readable. Uh, okay, first of all, this is not a type of three flow project. I thought I would just show you the default behavior of how a Composer works. This is actually a uh, Composer itself. Um, and what you see is that um, at the bottom over here, you have the, the Composer JSON file that defines it. Uh, then, um, yeah, uh, further up you have a directory called vendor. And that's, uh, that's a default in uh, Composer. And it's a default that we're not using in Type of 3 flow. Uh, so, uh, but it might be good to know. And what you can see here that is that in here, I, I should probably have had the, um, the Composer manifest for this as well, so you can see. But in here is all the packages that are required for Composer to run as source from your, um, uh, on your system. So it has uh, a JSON schema uh, module from a guy called Justin Rainbow. It has a uh, JSON lint from, from uh, Celtic, which is uh, Jordi, the guy who, actually, who also wrote uh, this part of Composer. It uses some Symfony. Um, uh, modules uh, for the for the CLI stuff, and uh, and everything uh, here is uh, just from from install from uh, from looking at that small composer file and installing it, that you have everything readily available. So um, uh, once all this stuff is in place, it gives us the benefit that installing a basic type of three uh, flow installation is as easy as this. Um, of course, you have to get Composer before that. That's easy. Let's go to getcomposer.org. Uh, and uh, Composer knows about uh, the Type 3 flow based distribution because we told it about it. And uh, if you tell it to create a project, it will download all the dependencies and put them in a, in a, um, a directory called uh, flow based distribution and have everything available for you. So that's uh, the, the short introduction to Composer and, uh, and how it works. Uh, there's of course a lot more to be said about Com Composer itself, but uh, to me, um, um, I, I hope you can see that this is a pretty powerful tool and a lot uh, easier than having to download some zip package from wherever, unload it, uh, uh, or go to some Git repository and do a clone and run different um, commands to get all the sub modules and everything uh, right. So. Um, Let's have a look at um, com Flow and Composer. Um, uh, the first thing here that, uh, that we're going to look at is uh, Composer handles the dependency management of Type 3 Flow, um, but Flow handles the package management. Uh, this means that Composer is responsible for, uh, for finding out which packages is to be installed. It's also um, uh, responsible for fetching and installing the code, but uh, Type of 3 Flow itself manages everything that has to do with uh, with the packages. Uh, so uh, if a package is activated, frozen, everything like that is handled by Type of 3 Flow itself. Um, another thing which might be worth mentioning is that uh, Composer and Flow are, at least at the current uh, way of using it, completely um, um, 
separated. So when you run Composer, uh, you're not running Flow at all, uh, or uh, apart from a few scripts that uh, does the magic at the end. And when you run Flow, it's not using Composer at, at all, so it's completely uh, separate. Um, yeah, uh, Composer fetches and installs everything for you. Uh, um, we have our own uh, structure, um, which I will show you in a bit. Another thing that Composer um, uh, does or helps us with is the auto load configuration. Uh, if you remember the Composer manifest, there was a small information about uh, where the source code is located, but Type 3 Flow itself is uh, taking care of all the auto-loading of packages. And this is something that is worth uh, noting, at least knowing, uh, because uh, actually Composer has a feature of generating an auto-loader when you install it. And most other projects that you will come across that use this Composer will use this auto-loader. Uh, Type 3 Flow doesn't. And, uh, and there's a reason for that. Uh, first of all, because we wrote a really nice auto loader before, <laughs> and we used this. Uh, uh, but the main part is that uh, a lot of the power that you get from Type of Three Flow, um, the the AOP, the uh, the magic of um, dependency injection, even though you're using new uh, um, constructions in your code and all that stuff is dependent on uh, Flow doing a reflection of the code, uh, which means that uh, the Flow is doing uh, creating proxy classes for every uh, class in the system, including third-party uh, code, and uh, and so the code that needs to be loaded for Flow to work is not actually the the file that uh, that you think it is. It's a, it's a proxy class, and of course that requires some logic. Um, um, the last thing that, uh, or one of the things that Composer does for us, is uh, that it knows about uh, third-party uh, packages. Uh, um, so, uh, as you saw before with Composer, uh, Symfony, other uh, libraries are available at packages, which means that these are readily available for us in our projects just by using Composer. If you search with Composer, you will be able to find all kinds of libraries. Uh, I have already used a few just small libraries like uh, for generating dummy data and stuff like that and it works uh, almost um, almost uh, painless. Um, so, <laughs> so Flow itself is of, in a, is of course uh, responsible for using, uh, for using the code. So, um, and a thing more that, um, that Composer does for us is, uh, is to help us update and maintain the packages. And I couldn't come up with uh, some good counterpart here, but uh, there's lots of, lots of other stuff that the Flow does. So these are just an overview of the responsibilities that Composer has and that Flow has. And as I said, uh, the systems are running independently of each other, so, um, so that's a nice overview to have. So let's have a look at how it looks when we're actually installing um, uh, a, a project, a Flow project. Um, <coughs> Uh, with um, with Composer, sorry. Um, as you see, um, the structure here is a bit different from what we saw with the uh, with the Composer example. Uh, the main thing is that we have configured uh, Composer to install all of the dependencies in a uh, library called Packages Libraries instead of Vendor. Uh, and you see over here, there's a line of uh, actually here is Composer itself. Uh, installed here. Um, you have the, the doctrine packages that uh, we were using. Uh, there's some other, uh, yeah, that's some custom packages that are installed. There's some stuff that you need for running the, the PHP unit test, and there's some, some Symfony stuff as well. So they're located there, and they have, uh, even though they're in a different, um, uh, sorry. This is getting hot up here. Uh, I will not take anything more off than this, I promise. Uh, <laughs> so, um, uh, unless you ask me to, of course. Um, <laughs> yeah. no, so, so, uh, so besides the fact that it's located in a different place, uh, the structure is completely the same. Um, uh, that's not the case for our own packages. Uh, when we were adopting Composer, we already had a different package structure uh, and directory structure, and we actually really liked that. Uh, so we uh, so we decided to keep it uh, with a few modifications uh, to to play nice. Um, and so what you see is that you have in the framework uh, directory um, 
all the packages that make up the, the framework. There's an application uh, framework that's my small uh, tab list application uh, residing there. And there's a few other directories where you can tell the composer uh, to install um, your, your code. Um, the way this uh, happens is that there's a, there's a package called composer installers that um, that flow is dependent on. And this is an official composer package that has information about all kinds of different systems like uh, Drupal, Top 3 Flow, um, Symfony, other st uh, stuff that needs a bit of special tweaking to install right. Um, and, um, and, and if you mark your package to be, for example, Top 3 Flow application, Composer will then know that it should be installed in the applications folder. Um, and that's uh, some documentation uh, at the Composer installer side about which, uh, which types uh, are supported. So, right. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I put this in here because a few times uh, I heard people um, uh, complain a bit about Composer, and there's reason to complain about Composer because there are things to, that are not working very nice. Uh, but uh, but um, but for me, I would say that working with submodules was never never really nice. I I, I didn't like that. And there's not, and there's not, even though there's some stuff that in terms of uh, the daily development circle and some stuff in terms of deployment that was easier because you can run update submodules just in one and it will update stuff and, and different, everything and some of the stuff that you need to do with composers feels a bit more um, redundant. Uh, I have to say that uh, I personally think that uh, it's a lot easier with composers and also that it solves a lot of these problems like uh, um, um, Dependency management, uh, installing stuff that you basically don't know where it is. You can you can just install uh, a PHP unit uh, from Compose, and you don't have to know anything about where it's located. I think it's on GitHub, but it could be somewhere else, uh, and and you don't have to care about that because it can just do that. And if they decide to move it, they can tell it. Uh, they just change their configuration, their packages, and you don't have to care about that. It happens all the same. So there's nothing about checking out soft modules and and, uh, and and moving around. So anyway, yeah, that's just a, a small slide there. Okay, so um, let's uh, let's take a look at uh, working with the Composer. And I'm, I'm not going to go through everything, um, uh, all commands about Composer, but I'm going to talk about the two most important commands in Composer and uh, they are called install and update, and um, this is what you're going to use all the time when you are developing. And they are different, even though uh, uh, it's a bit confusing when you start out using Composer. And I'll just shortly try to um, to describe the difference here. So um, when you first get uh, a, a project that is based on Composer. What you have is this Composer manifest file that I showed you some slides back, and it has the information uh, uh, to get um, the, uh, the, the the dependencies and install them in the right places uh, for the project that you need. Um, and at the beginning, it doesn't matter if you run install or if you run update, uh, because it will just look at the dependencies. It will look up. Uh, the files that, uh, or the dependencies that are needed, look for their dependencies and somehow try to figure out what needs to be installed and do that. But once the first run has been done, uh, uh, a uh, composer.log file is, uh, is generated and that's a pretty important file. Um, what is in this file is a complete definition of the exact versions that you have installed on your system at the moment, and once that uh, file is in place, install and update starts to uh, behave differently. So what happens is, if you run Composer install, it will look at the .log file present, and it will make sure that everything on your system is uh, in coherence with the .log file. So the .log file is um, it's a definition of, uh, you say, a snapshot of your of your system. It will make sure that everything is the exact same version as the last time that you ran uh, when the log file was uh, created, and uh, that is very useful if you're working in a team and you have different people uh, uh, need to work on the same project. And this is also why the, the log file needs to be in your um, versioning. Um, 
system. Um, when you run update, it will not look at the .log file. What it will look at is the, uh, the composer manifest and the defined dependencies. So what could possibly have happened is that, uh, let's say that you have a, de uh, a requirement for type 3 flow, uh, version 2 star, or anything uh, uh, above uh, version 2. Um, uh, so maybe what happened is that a new version was released since the last time you, that you updated it, so it will actually go out and would, it will maybe install type 3 flow 2.1 uh, on your system and it will update the log file. So, so, um, so the function of the update file is to uh, get the newest versions of all packages on your system uh, that still uh, fulfills the requirements in uh, your files or in your composer manifests and in the packages that are uh, depending on, on that. So it will update all the packages to the newest version that that is uh, that is um, defined. That is yeah. That is fulfilled. Um, the install uh, command, just to repeat that, will not update anything. It will just make sure that your system is in compliance with what is defined in your .log file. Um, so these are the most two uh, the two most uh, important commands. There's some, some others, some help commands, and everything. But it's important to understand the difference uh, between these because they do make a difference on your on your daily work and. Uh, it's my understanding that uh, you guys are probably uh, smarter than that, but if I look around the, the net and see the problems that people have with Composer, this is one of the things that people have a hard time um, getting around. Okay, <coughs> so um, let's have a look at some of the challenges that, uh, that, is, that comes from, uh, from using Composer, uh, or also uh, called Composer, the not-so-good parts. Um, Composer is a pretty new software. It's, I think it's uh, about a year old uh, since the first release now. I think it was February last year or something like that. It has still not been, been released in a stable 1.0 version. I think the last one is an alpha 6 from December or something like that. Which also means that when you run uh, the, the self-update of Composer, what it actually does is that it checks out the, 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 master, of, uh, the master branch. Um, it's pretty stable considering that, but it is, uh, it is a bleeding edge. Um, uh, so, uh, so obviously uh, working with a software that's bleeding edge, you all know that because you've been working with, uh, with Type 3 Flow for the, for the last years, so or those of you that, that have. Uh, there's some challenges, there's some stuff that uh, even though it has been tested and well built, some scenarios show up that nobody thought about or didn't uh, think could happen or f uh, thought that people were too smart to, to, um, to do, and it's the same thing with Composer. Uh, another thing which uh, I think uh, uh, is a bit of a problem with Flow is that there uh, seems to be a lack of enterprise experience with, with Composer. Uh, and since uh, Flow is a very sophisticated uh, uh, framework and a lot of you guys are doing uh, uh, big and serious um, projects with this, uh, that's a problem because you need uh, um, uh, continuous integration, automatic testing, automatic deployment, all that kind of stuff. And there's not a lot of best practices, uh, uh, to say maybe none, uh, about uh, Composer. So uh, we're working in a field where we have to figure out together and together with all the other projects that are using Composer, how should this actually work? What are the, what are the things we need for this to, to work properly on our, on our setups? Uh, there, there are no uh, books you can buy from uh, from from O'Reilly with an animal on or, or blocks you can look up because it, it has not been been done so many times before. Um, another another thing is that there are some overhead with running Composer. That's another complaint that I hear uh, a lot of times is that Composer is a bit slow. Uh, the main reason for that is that every time you run an update, Composer needs to go to all of the repositories mentioned and look up. Uh, if anything has changed in the Composer file, are there any new branches, are there any new tags, are there any new things? And I mean, that's not like it's extremely expensive, but if you have uh, 35 packages installed and you need to look up 35 different Git repositories, that's, uh, that, that, that takes a bit of, uh, of, uh, of time. Um, which is another reason for using mainly Composer install unless you need, uh, actually need an update. Um, 
<coughs> Another thing uh, that is worth mentioning is that uh, there has been some changes in the in the format of the .log file uh, not so long ago. So it's worth uh, if you have run an update, it would have been updated. But if you uh, did not do that, it's worth uh, running an update on you to to have it because there's been some optimizations. Uh, another thing uh, is that there is some convention clashes between Composer and uh, and uh, Flow. Uh, the naming of the packages being the the obvious thing. Um, and finally, there are some uh, some repetitive work when when working with us. Some some tasks feels a bit tedious when when working. Okay, I see my time is running uh, running a bit fast here, so I'll just uh, I'll just move on a bit faster. Okay, so uh, let's look at the typical scenario of. Um, of a flow installation. Um, this, uh, I tried to, to make a diagram of, uh, of how it, uh, it typically looks. Um, typically, you have uh, the framework installed, you have some libraries installed, maybe you have some dependencies yourself, but flow itself has some dependencies, Doctrine and YAML and some other stuff. Uh, and usually you will have yourself a few um, uh, packages in the applications folder and maybe some other places. Uh, and, and probably some, some stuff that you are using that you're not maintaining yourself. Um, then in the root of your setup, you will have the build uh, um, directory. Uh, you'll have a lot of other files, and then you'll have the composer JSON and composer log files. And um, the way that I recommend uh, setting this up, uh, and which it comes uh, as a standard, is uh, to have each package in its own Git repository, um, so that's why you see they have a slightly different green color here, uh, because they're different Git repositories. And then you have the main project in a uh, repository by itself. And that can, that can feel a bit stupid, because basically what you have in your distribution or in your main project uh, is a Composer JSON file, a Composer log file, and a Git ignore file. Uh, and not much more is, uh, is needed. But uh, it allows you to, to have this, um, this working mode where uh, you know exactly uh, which dependencies are installed at the, at the same uh, time. Right. So, uh, so how do you do this? Um, the, what you can do is that you can add um, this configuration to your root file of your, um, of your project, the Composer Manifest uh, uh, root. Um, uh, you can tell uh, Composer to look up at uh, your private Git repository. It will then look up the, uh, the project, uh, figure out uh, what's available there, and allow you to install it. And obviously that can be uh, done for as many projects as you need. And uh, when you get to, to add more than two, that gets very uh, tiresome. Uh, so, um, so what is recommended is to use uh, a software called Satis. Um, and uh, one of the benefits of Satis is that you can see it uses the exact same uh, configuration as your composer file. But what Satis does is that it, uh, it will generate a, um, a composer, uh, I know you know what that's called, but uh, uh, a composer repository, I think it's called, uh, file. It's a JSON file with the information. So when you run Satis, it will look into these uh, uh, repositories, it will fetch the information, it will write it down in a, in a file that can be then uh, used um, instead of it. And um, besides uh, the, the benefit of not having to put every uh, repository in your composer file, it also has the benefit that your composer, when you run an update, does not have to contact all of these Git repositories and ask for the information because it was done by Satsis when it generated the file. And um, if you're a developer working alone or something like that, it's maybe not a big deal. But if you're in a company and you have a bunch of, uh, of packages, I would recommend that you set up some kind of build system that automatically build uh, Satsis uh, uh, Composer um, uh, repository from your packages so it's available for, for everybody. So what you then do in your uh, local Composer file is to just add this uh, status file and it will ask there instead, instead of him. So, right. So um, here's uh, um, the almost the last slide. It's uh, it's a suggested uh, workflow, and that's just to explain to you how uh, how um, how the, the daily work of a developer 
works. So what you do when you, you know, get into the office in the morning is that you go to your main uh, project, you run a git pull, uh, if something happens since the last time you were there, uh, the composer log file will then be updated. Uh, and then you run composer install, and uh, it will then update every uh, uh, package in your system uh, to the state uh, that the last developer uh, who pushed to the project uh, uh, put it in. So you know then that your system is in the exact same state that, or at least the packages are, the exact same state as um, uh, as the other developers. Actually this is not only about the packages, it's also about uh, uh, PHP versions and uh, different uh, um, that are called modules, uh, extensions to, to PHP. So you can make sure that if somebody installed the solar package uh, on their system and, and made a dependency on, on that, you will actually be told that you need the solar PHP uh, extension for uh, to work. So what you do then is that you step into your, uh, to your uh, package and uh, you start to code. Uh, you do a, a git commit once in a while, uh, every time you have something uh, reasonable to do. And <coughs> and you push it upstream once in a while, and that's a loop here uh, indicating that this is how you <laughs> this is how you work during the day. And then at the end of the day, or whenever it's fit, uh, you will go uh, back into the root of your project. Um, since you probably don't need to update everything in your system, what you will just do is you can just run compose update your package, and then it will just uh, update the package that you have, the pointers to that, so uh, that will not be as uh, slow as, uh, as running the full. Uh, you'll then do a commit to the base project and push it. And now everybody else is able to check out and get the system in the same state that you have. So, um, I think in the description I promised some best practices. I'm not sure that's the best practice, or, but at least that's my suggestion. Christophe? Yes, uh, some uh, small remark. Uh, for me, uh, I, we, uh, we used to do this approach for the Sunshine Project, for example, and it, it, if you maintain a lot of packages, really hard uh, because there are a lot of steps and we have errors on each push so you basically you have to do two reviews to get one change into the system so um, for a new project uh, I really skipped the composer for my packages mm -hmm. it feels much nicer okay. at one time you can make composer packages out of the packages again if, if you are at a certain point but for initial development I would suggest to skip that yeah. Okay, so I don't know if, if that was, uh, if I work here, the, just a quick recap is that if you have a lot of, uh, of packages, it's, uh, it can be a lot of, uh, of work working the, with this, and especially if you have um, Garrett and other review systems in, so you have to do uh, uh, reviews of, of both the commit here and the commit here. So, uh, so Christopher says that uh, it can be worth just skipping using Composer for updating your packages and, and working in a regular uh, gateway until at some point you you need that. Uh, and I think that's that's a valid point. Another thing that I've been thinking about is that uh, I think it would I think we can automate some of these things with uh, with some tools that can help out. But as I said, there's a lot of, lot of repetitive tasks and and uh, and it can be helpful just instead of having to update all the packages that you're working on, it would be nice if the system, you know, knew that these are the three packages you update, so you can do that in just one command. But, but that's exactly one of the examples of, of, uh, of, uh, of it being a young software, and, and we need to figure out some, some ways of, uh, of doing it. So, um, yeah, that actually um, uh, uh, leads me to my thank you slide and my uh, questions slide. So, any more questions or comments or everything? Yes? Okay. Uh, you, you had one notice? He is a, I'm sorry, I took this a minute. Guy, yeah? This guy, we should not blame that it's a wrong graphic. Mm -hmm. This is not big from that or that. Oh, okay. He is a composer. Yeah, but, but, okay, that, let's not discuss that. <laughs> okay, that's <laughs> granted. Now, okay, and the question. <laughs> now the question. Uh, do you have some uh, best practice for uh, including uh, libraries that are not the really CSR zero, but uh, they are they are not 
th that's one of those questions where I'm tempted to say, I, uh, you're really mumbling, I don't understand what you're saying, let's move on. But, uh, but, <laughs> but I did understand what you're saying. So, uh, the question was, uh, if, if I have any best practices regarding using third-party uh, third code that uh, is composer enabled but does not comply to PSR zero, which is the standard for auto loading that uh, the type of three flow is using. And uh, the question is kind of like, a, yeah, uh, because um, uh, uh, I think the best way, but I'm not sure it's the best practice, maybe somebody, because I know people had problems with this, but uh, in the code that you, uh, that requires this, uh, uh, this third party thing, uh, you can create a package PSP file, uh, which which allows you to, to do some stuff when when the package is uh, initiated. Um, and that's automatically not generated, but it uses a default uh, thing if you need that. And in that package, it's possible to require other stuff. Uh, and uh, it should be possible. I haven't done that myself, but but uh, it should be possible to get the part of the auto loader from. Uh, composer that is needed and require uh, put that on the autoloader stack within your package. Uh, so that's what that's my theoretical <laughs> answer. But I also know that some people have some problems well, doing that. It it doesn't work. Best example for exactly that uh, it works from custom thing, but it doesn't work on the current two zero. So okay. 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 So, so Stefan says it doesn't work like that. You need to manually require it, and then uh, I um, I would like to just um, um, uh, tell you why what the reasons are that we are not. Uh, I mean, uh, we want to at some point uh, support the other auto loading uh, mechanisms uh, than uh, than PSR zero because, as you mentioned, composer supports uh, other or can generate auto loaders for other types of uh, projects. The problem is. <coughs> Sorry. The problem is that, as I said, uh, 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 Top3 Flow does a lot of uh, reflection and proxying of the code that it includes uh, to allow of ALP, dependency injection, all that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, one of the uh, prerequisites for doing that is that, uh, that it follows some of the things that are in the PSR0, namely that there are only one class in, a, in one file and that uh, the file has the same name as the class and uh, those kind of things. And that's, if, if the project is PSR zero, we know that's the case. If it's not, uh, we don't know that. Uh, so it's not, uh, it's, not, it's not only about including an also loader and loading the classes, it's also about the way that the type of free flow handles uh, the code. And of course we could decide to say then, um, you don't have AOP for these projects and everything, but we need a uh, we need a way to handle that in a consistent manner. We don't want a system where you you have to know the internals of the packages to to know if AOP is working with the project or not. So so uh, unfortunately, it's not just about loading the classes. There's a lot of other stuff that we need to to handle if we use those third-party packages. So um, right, uh, there was another question there. They're, they're very, very much uh, alike. Uh, in fact, uh, the dependency um, uh, solver in um, in Composer is a PHP port of um, uh, what's that Linux? Uh, what's it called? The German Linux distribution? Yes. SUSE, yeah, SUSE. I think it calls SIP or something in, in SUSE, but it's a port of that uh, solver. So, uh, so of course, there's different needs if you are on a. I mean, if if it's a um, uh, if it's uh, an operating system or something else, there's different uh, subtasks that you need to fulfill, linking libraries, stuff like that. But basically, it's the same kind of kind of problem that they're trying to use. And Composer is, is very much inspired by those kind of things, but also by uh, NPM and GEM and uh, the stuff that you know from Node and Ruby and that kind of stuff. So, all right, more questions? Yeah? If I want to keep my project as simple as possible in the flow, flow project, for example, what do you think about doing uh, having a digital postcard with just one, just ignoring the framework and the web and all these sources, but having all the all my pages and the pages folders in this 
feature repository instead of having two repositories, what sort of proposals that we want to for each page? Yeah, so the question is, uh, uh, if it's possible, or what do I think about uh, having just one Git repository and uh, and um, and including instead of having a sub repository for the packages, um, then uh, then just including that uh, in the code and then ignoring the other uh, uh, the other repositories uh, in in that or, or configuring that way. I think it, I think it's possible. Uh, I, I haven't tried it myself. I have to say I like I like the the way that um, that um, uh, sorry yeah, it works it works yeah uh, yeah so it it, it works uh, I like to have the independent packages but of course it's uh, it's uh, it's a, partly a matter of taste and also a, part, a matter of work routine so it's it's doable yeah. it can be split later obviously um, and it also depends on the long-term goals you have. If you know that what you are uh, developing will be a package that should be sort of publicly used by all the guys out there on the internet, then it might make sense to have it separate from the beginning. Um, but you can do that later. If it's in-house strictly, we'll never leave this application scope, then there's probably no good reason to, to go to the additional repository and log file and everything. Okay, was that clear to everybody? Do we need to repeat it? Okay, I'll take that as a yes. Um, yeah, I have one additional remark. So there's one gotcha. If you have your custom application, pick it directly in the main Git repository. So you have a main Git repository with a composer, JSON, and log, and then packages application, and then maybe some application only packages. Then it works pretty well, and it's much easier from the workflow for the beginning, but um, the composer dependencies in your application packages won't be used. So if you require several other packages, they won't be used from composer because it doesn't really know about your package because it's not managed by composer. So you have to notice that and maybe add these requirements to your main composer, Jason, but that is somehow a hack. So, but yeah, in the end, it's, it's a trade-off between development speed and this uh, for this case and having a set up. Yeah, there's another question here. How do you configure the path where the packages go? You, you mentioned the custom types like have to be application package. Uh, how do you say uh, where to yeah, so the, the question is uh, how do I configure the path uh, where to go and um, uh, let me just see if I can find that for you. Um, the type up here uh, tells uh, uh, the composer installer package that this is a package of type three fl flow framework, and then it will put it into the framework folder. And there's a there's a few um, <coughs> there's a few different types defined. There's a framework, there's application, uh, there's sites, there's plugins. Uh, maybe there's one more. And actually, we wanted. Ah, it's package, not application. Yeah, sorry, uh, but it's documented. Um, <laughs> so, so don't trust me. Trust the docs. Uh, uh, anyway, actually, we wanted, and the first version we had of it, we had uh, this uh, kind of like um, a dynamic uh, install thing, so you could just put whatever you wanted at the end, and then it would create the the the, the directory and put it there, uh, which we thought was nice. But the the maintainer of the composer installer package. Uh, uh, didn't think it was nice. He thought he would get bug reports from people having their code deleted and stuff like that. So, so we we made a compromise and, and deleted that. Uh, there's a workaround for that if you need it, but uh, but my time is running out. So, uh, yeah. Let's have the last uh, question. I don't know, uh, Toby. Um, so you can't define a custom type. You, you kind of register this type. Yeah, it's registered in. Um, okay. In uh, let me just. Uh, because I have a slide for that. What, you had another question while I find my slides? Yeah. Uh, how about not tag a version? How do you tag a version? Yeah, yeah it's, that's just Git tags. Composer knows how to, uh, to look up uh, tags and branches in, uh, in Git, so... Um, <coughs> yeah, if you follow the naming scheme, and it's using uh, what's called semantic versioning, which is kind of like a standard for, for that. So, uh, okay, here was another. Uh, oh, so, what you? Maybe on this versioning thing, you can supply a version number in your manifest 
Yeah. But um, I think it will be ignored if you have actually tags in your in your Git repository. So just don't use the version uh, straight or the version <laughs> specification in the manifest. Just do Git tags and be happy. Yeah, with that's it. easier. But you can define it. I don't know. Do we need to end? Can we take another five minutes if there's uh, okay? So uh, okay. So let me just show you. Uh, so that, um, okay, actually, oh, here's, here's my son, uh, his, his name is Pelle, and he's here because uh, I need work for the next three weeks until I'm going to take care of him for two months. So if somebody needs a developer for three weeks, I'm available. Um, so, and if I'm not getting any work from that picture, then it's, uh, then it's done, I'm finding something else to do. So, <laughs> uh, so um, okay, let me see, uh, I was looking for... Uh, whoops, type of three is people. There. Um, okay, uh, this is uh, this is the magic setting. If you if you have a composer installer installed, <laughs> which you have if you run type of three, you can do this, uh, and uh, and you can uh, basically you tell it to put whatever package is available up here uh, into your uh, specifically defined uh, uh, path. So that is supported, but it's it's pretty far down in the documentation. So another thing that I just wanted to mention because it's been mentioned a few times here is um, there's Pelle again. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, there has been some problems updating Type Three Flow when we switched from our fork of uh, of uh, composer installers to the actual composer installers, and um, and it took us it took us a while to figure out why that was, but here is the explanation and, uh, the, and uh, not the explanation, but the, how you fix it. You need to delete some files and run update again. But the reason I'm mentioning this is apparently uh, this can still happen if you install uh, uh, the beta version, which is still depending on the old thing, and then you try to update, you will run into this problem as well. So uh, it's on my Google Plus uh, account, and I created a nice. Uh, Bitly help me, I can't update flow uh, thing down here. So, so look at that if you have that problem. So, right. Anything else? So I guess it's time to sit out in the sun and have some beers. <laughs> <laughs>